the slides and then we uh, register my uh, uh, special, special thank you to a few uh, parties that make this uh, uh, project and today's event possible. First, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Mr. Andrew Robinson from MAS for coming here to support us and uh, of course also bring a whole group of uh, economists from the uh, policy uh, economic policy development here. Uh, secondly, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Uh, Yuhua Wang from MasterCard for very quickly endorsing the collab collaboration with SKBI. Uh, we just met in the lunch uh, in the coffee shop a few hours later, is it done? That speaks the efficiency of a MasterCard and a worldwide. <laughs> we are still learning. Uh, the, to improve our efficiency. Um, third, I'd like to thank three teams um, from SKBI, MasterCard Worldwide, and Agility um, for working very hard behind the scene. There are at least a dozen people involved at different stages of the uh, project. They have all made important contributions. Uh, finally, last but not least, I really wish to thank uh, the chairman of uh, SKBI Advisory Board, Mr. Lim chi for keep supporting and encouraging us to um, work on the applied research that can generate uh, 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 impact on policy and um, social welfare. Um, this is the uh, outline of our talk. I will focus on the first part, which is the motivation part, and hope to convince you uh, why the inflation expectations are important. My collaborator, Dr. Gosh, will go through the rest of our uh, slides. Um, why we care about inflation expectations? From a social planner's point of view, let me just simply quote two statements from uh, Ben Bernanke. The first statement basically tells us why high and persistent infl inflation is a bad to a society. The second statement basically says that to maintain low inflation in the long run, we have to understand the state of a public's expectations of inflation. Why the public's expectations of inflation are so important to actual inflation? From a consumer's perspective, we all know that they have to make a decision about their consumption, which critically depends on inflation expectations. In addition, wages and their labor input also depends on their inflation expectations. A particular relevant issue to Singaporeans is that inflation could be imported through exchange rate. How do households uh, prepare? From the firm perspective, we know decisions such as the input for production and hence output level the price setting decisions and the inventory level all depends on, all linked to the inflation expectations. In the Singapore context, the small and the medium, medium uh, enterprises are especially sensitive to the inflation expectations due to their exposure to imported inflation risk. Perhaps a more important perspective comes from the uh, come from the central banks. We know that to many central banks, low inflation is an objective of their monetary policy. Singapore is not an excep exception. A firm control of inflation is vital to good monetary policy. How central bank control inflation? They typically communicate their inflation expectations to the public in normal, 
long run for the inflation expectations to the public. And they conduct monetary policy to achieve the target. In economics, we say that uh, they try to anchor inflation. Therefore, the, we need to measure the ability of central bank to anchor inflation. Effective communications between the central bank and its public would lead to consensus and certainty. Consensus here means that public's view about future in inflation should converge. Consensus here means that um, the representative agent in the, in the economy should be confident about his prediction of a future inflation. The object of these two concepts are disagreement and uncertainty. And we believe disagreement and uncertainty should be able to help us to understand the effective effectiveness of uh, communication between the central bank and the public. Although these two things, disagreement and uncertainty, are different concepts, in the literature, people tend to use disagreement to measure, to approximate uncertainty. Our survey data allows us to dis, uh, disentangle the two measurements and to directly compare them. And hence, we can share light on uh, how to improve the communication between the central bank and the public. In addition, we, our data allow us to you know, study how inflation expectations are formed. And hence, you know, we really hope to provide some uh, guidance to, uh, to central banks how to in improve their communication. Um, MAS uses surveys of professional forecasters. And in that survey, the sample size is much smaller, usually 20-ish. Of course, the respondent in the sur survey is very different from those in our survey. As um, uh, my president uh, uh, indicated, we have done uh, two surveys so far, one in September, one in, in, uh, de uh, in December. In both surveys, uh, we collect information about 400 consumers randomly selected in Singapore. We ask 30, more than 30 questions uh, about their demographic and the social economic uh, information. And we also ask, of course importantly, their expectations of three inflation rates and other variables. We solicit both uh, point forecast as well as a density forecast. I now invite my uh, collaborator, Dr. Gosh, to present the other slides. Thank you so much for coming in, and thanks, Shun, for uh, passing it on to me. Uh, now, a few things that, uh, that we would like to say about the, uh, of the design of the survey. The, the survey design was done with a lot of thought put into how to elicit information that will be helpful in forming how uh, inf uh, inflation expectations are actually formed in the general public, not experts, uh, but, but general public. So one of the things we used is a quota sample based on representative sa uh, sampling of both gender, age, marital status, economic conditions, and it turns out that about 85.3% of the people who, are, who were uh, responded uh, had uh, were joint, at least joint decision makers of the household. Now this actually turns out to be a very important thing as we will see later. And, and in, in the December wave, it came down slightly to about 80%. Uh, more than 92% of the people surveyed were aware of economic conditions that affected their household. And 90% follow media reports on, thanks. 90% uh, follow media reports uh, on economic issues. Now this also plays a very significant role as we will see along the way. Now, uh, among a few other questions that we asked in order to find out and really tease out what exactly is the source of these expectation formations, we found out that, well, among other things, there was in the September wave about 0.5% uh, actually uh, was a number for expected increment in household income, and that turned out to be close to 1% in, in the December, uh, December wave. Uh, we also asked about their expectations about exchange rate uh, changes 
over time. And it, uh, in, in September, there was a nearly a 1% uh, number was basically the number for depre depreciation of Sing dollar. But as we know that later there was a change and it turns out that it's fairly flat. So uh, in the December wave, there isn't that much, uh, so there is expectation there will be more stable uh, exchange rate between the two without any significant appreciation or depreciation. Now in December, we actually had an extra question asked about their perception uh, through what actions they are taking, in particular, uh, whether they are investing more in the stock market, in the equity market, as opposed to the previous uh, previous period. So in the, pre in the current year, they had about 16.6% .6 of the respondents said that they have invested in the stock market, and about 14% actually have other assets as well. Now this number, when we, when we asked them exactly what is your projections, how much are you going to hold uh, equity in your portfolio, uh, going forward to the next 12 months, that number came down by about 2.2% to 14.4. So this is also one of those crucial clocks we will see that uh, helps us uh, look at inflation expectations. I wanted to move forward to some pictures. In fact, pictures do tell a thousand words. And these are, well, there are almost a almost thousand words in these pictures as well. Uh, if, you, if you look at uh, the, the differences between <coughs> Uh, two, uh, two different uh, forecasts that we have looked at. One of them is the headline inflation, which is the overall inflation rate, and the other one is the Singapore core, a definition that we used where we have looked at headline without uh, uh, accommodation and transportation expenditures in the, in the portfolio. So what we find out is that the, the two, uh, two lines that you see out here, these two are the measures of disagreement among different economic agents. Now, it turns out that they are more or less same, but th there is a flattening out a little bit more. Now, this is the blue one is the September one. Now, that actually flattened out in December. Uh, same thing we see also in the Singapore core inflation rate. That there is, this is overall over the 400 sample size that we have looked at. Now, the other question, as June also pointed out, that we, we asked, is what is your certainty? What is your uncertainty about the number that you are they are saying in terms of inflation expectation. Now that level, which is what we measure as an uncertainty on the responses, that turns out to be quite flat, much, much flatter than the disagreement that exists in, in, the, in, the, in the respondents. So that means even though they are actually answering a question, they're not completely sure of what will be the outcome over the current or the future periods. Now this turns out to be one of the most important results that we do find and as June also pointed out, that in, in the literature, it hasn't been treated as, as separately as we, we do, uh, do treat them. So as, as, as I mentioned that I have gone over most of these Singapore core inflation rates and uh, the levels of uncertainty, as we find out, is much more than the disagreement that exists in the, in, 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 in the population. Now, just to give you some numbers, since you've been waiting for numbers for this long, uh, these are the numbers that we actually got for the standard rates of inflation that, that are out there in the September and the December waves. In the September wave, we have 4.68 as the headline rate, which is closest to, now once again, I have to mention that this is a perceived rate of inflation expectation, not the actual rate. We didn't benchmark the numbers when we asked the respondents that this is the number that has been revealed from MAS or Department of Statistics, but we just asked them, what do you feel, what do you perceive as the inflation expectation rate? And that turns out to be about 4.68 in the September and 4.7 in, in December. So not that much change in, the, in, in, in their perception given the, the consumption basket that they actually have. And the standard deviation is a measure of variation. It turns out that they are about comparable as well. When we go to the core, which is basically something without, uh, this is, uh, which is internationally used uh, standard for, for inflation rates. Score doesn't have food or energy expenditures included in that. And that turns out to be slightly lower. So these two might have formed some of these slightly higher numbers that we saw before. Now, last but not the least, in the Singapore context, uh, we have looked at the numbers, and that seemed to have come down in, in December compared to the September wave to about 4.58 compared to 4.67 in, in, in September. Now, of course, this also means that part of the reason is probably there was a perception that accommodation and private transportation have actually gone up uh, for, for the consumption basket 
over over the last uh, last uh, couple of months. Now, just to benchmark with the numbers exactly what numbers we get. Now, this was not shown to the respondents, so this is a number that we are getting, uh, which which basically compares the number that we got in the September number is 4.5 as opposed to 4.68. So it's a slightly higher number that we got uh, that came out from uh, from uh, the uh, the headline inflation rate from MAS. And on the other hand, the December number, uh, which is a quarter on, uh, the quarterly number, is 5.5 percent year on year, and that number is is closer to. Uh, just go back one slide. Now that number is slightly higher than the number that we actually get here. Now, the, the differences are, of course, the perception and the actual numbers that are coming from the Department of Statistics could actually be different. Now, we have asked the, the other question, which tends to be a question that we are very interested to look at, is what exactly do you think your forecast for inflation is five years down the road? And that is what uh, one of the issues of the policies uh, of the central bank is, all, uh, is as well, to look at what type of information anchoring is going on in the, in the, in the market among the, and the decision maker, the economic decision maker, and the players in the market. And turns out that uh, the headline rate numbers uh, is, is, has lowered from September from, uh, to, to December by a little bit, about 0.1% or, or nine basis points. Now the core rate also have gone down, but there is a difference in the in the Singapore uh, Singapore core. Singapore core is something which is locally relevant. The core is something which most central banks like Bank of England, as well as uh, as well as uh, the Federal Reserve, actually uses more than the headline rate for policy decisions. Now. Uh, now, to benchmark once again about the future, now this is the one-year forecast. Now, of course, we are not giving the one-year forecast into the future. We are looking at the five-year, the long-term forecast, rather than the one-year forecast. So these are the numbers that, that came out uh, just middle of December. This, once again, was after our, our survey was done. Uh, there is the headline expected rates is, is higher than the Singapore core inflation rate. Now, this is uh, without accommodation and transportation. And as I mentioned, that this might have been because of this, the, the consumption baskets of the two, uh, two uh, commodities there. The five-year rate expectations are strongly predicted by the current perceived rate, which means that the first one that I showed you, the number, can be treated as if as a benchmark to, to decide on what exactly is the perception that, that people are giving about their current state of affairs as opposed to their prediction into the future. So, uh, why the Singapore Index of Inflation Expectation? Well, there are several reasons. We, I have already shown you so many different numbers. You know, uh, one of them, and some of them are for one year, the current year, the others are for the five-year period. And, and it's, it's always a question. There's a huge debate that is going on, uh, uh, particularly by Bullard, James Bullard, who is at the Century Fed, uh, Fed. He's the CEO there. He has been pointing out that, well, maybe the core is actually wrong. Means the core is not the best number to use for making monetary decisions because people on the street really are using the headline rates. So taking energy and food expenses out of it might not be a fair thing to them. Uh, so, so we actually propose a combination of the available instruments that we have out, out there, which actually uh, helps us in reducing the volatility or, or the level of variation in the numbers as well substantially. And there are some other aspects of it that I'm going to point out as well. Uh, now this is of course uh, weighted, so that's why the volatility is slightly down, and we don't really have to venture into the consumption basket of the individual. We don't take anything off of there. So like like the the headline rate, uh, we have included every component that they are spending on in that uh, in that basket with differential weightage when we actually do averaging of, across the three different rates. Stability, it has actually shown to have lower, uh, lower volatility or lower variation than each of these individual ones. And finally, it's as, as complete, as I mentioned, that it gives you a full picture with lower weightage on some of the more variable components that are there, but without sacrificing any of those items in the consumption basket. There are things, uh, the expectations are higher for people who are aware of economic conditions as well as who are going to keep invested in the stock market, so it goes higher for them. Uh, it is also higher for expected in income increment, so they are really putting the two things together. That if they expect a higher increment, then chances are that you know there might actually be higher inflation 
in, in the future as well for them. Now, they, whether they are decision makers or are aware of the economic conditions, both seem to play, the interaction term seems to play an important role, and it's negatively affected by expected exchange rate. So that means that if there is a depreciation of Singapore dollars uh, with, with the US dollar, they expect, uh, uh, so uh, the negatively affected by expected exchange rate appreciation, which means that there is a negative relationship between the two. And finally, inflation expectation was higher in December for individuals who are aware of the economic conditions and, and for uncertainty. Now, going forward, similar things actually are captured in the index, uh, inflation index that, that we just proposed. And it turns out that, that this item here, invest in equity in the current market, does indeed play a very important role in perceptions or really uh, what their sentiment like is in the future. So going, going forward, well, what about the five-year rate? These are the regression results that, you know, I, I'm not going to go into every detail of the numbers, but I'll just mention what is the, you know, lowdown on from, from the number that we get there. So Singapore citizens who follow media reports turns out to be one of the very important factors that does have an influence on their five-year expectations. So media reports on inflation expectations, as well as what is going on in the global economy. Now, it turns out that it is slightly higher for married and Singaporeans who are Singaporean <coughs> citizens, individual aware of, uh, aware of economic issues that are facing the household, also play a role in, in long-term inflation uh, expectations. Now, from the December wave, we find out that there is indeed uh, an effect of people who have been staying in Singapore for longer. They do have a benchmark that they can compare things with. Now, it's possibly affected by expected increment, so if they have an increment, and also by the level of uncertainty that they have. The level of uncertainty we talked about before does seem to play a role. And, and finally, in the, in the uh, Singapore core, it turns out that economic issues facing the household and also have a strong negative influence of, uh, of what is going on in the market. So combining the two, the, one of the issues that we find out is that for the five-year period, the Syndex 5 in September, people who are following media report on forming expectation do form one of the very strong statistical tools which form uh, help form people's expectations into the future. And, and of course, uh, among the other things, uncertainty does play a very important role, and so does their perceived investment into the stock market into the future that also play a role in forming their expectation. So just to conclude, uh, uh, the way ahead, we have designed, as, as we mentioned, the care, uh, survey carefully to, to really tease out some information that was really not there in the market before. Uh, this is an innovative way of looking at it. Lots of these inflation expectations and, and charts are available through Bank of England, or Federal Reserve, but some of the numbers that we have uh, got out uh, actually shows that this sort of so-called inertia of uh, inflation rates, the stickiness of inflation rate actually shows up here as well. Expectation formation is something which is, I think, critical in the study that we have done here. And we do find out some very interesting results about what are the reasons how expectations are formed. And finally, we can also track uncertainty that exists among individuals who are responding to, uh, to, to the questions, which also play a role. So hopefully, this will give another tool to, to the policymakers to be able to look deeper into how information is assimilated in the economy. Thank you very much.